Well, joining us live from Strasbourg is the UK MEP for Yorkshire and Humber, Mike Hookham. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, you campaigned for Britain to leave the EU ahead of the referendum, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, and the fishing policy was a big part of your campaign. What do you hope that we will, uh, the fishing industry will look like post Brexit? Well, uh, I'm hoping that we get a fishing industry back, that we regain our 200 mile economic waters, uh, and we can start fishing our waters again. Uh, and it, you know, we have a golden opportunity now to regain a fishing industry, a viable fishing industry, on the same lines as, as Iceland and Norway. Uh, we've got a very, a very uh, strong fishing industry, and I think we can do that. Uh, and really, well, I'm, I'm listening to Melanie on speaking now and asking for this to be pushed forward. Well, let's not forget that Melanie on uh, campaigned vigorously to remain within the European Union, whereas we wouldn't have had a, a fishing industry. Uh, and you know, in, in 2012, she was actually saying the fishing industry didn't have decent jobs and it wasn't a skilled industry. Uh, so I, I find it rather amusing now that she's pushing this to the forefront. Right. Well, she's she's doing that because she believes that the promises made before the referendum are are, are in a danger of slipping away. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, they're not they're not going to slip away. I'm uh, I'm uh, fighting very hard, I, I, as are my colleagues within the the European uh, Union. Uh, we're fighting for a fishing industry, and we have been for many years, and that will be. You know, let's let's really, you know, be be honest about this. The Brexit negotiations, as two of the most important parts of that, will be fishing and immigration. You know, the the free movement of people, and they're going to be right at the forefront. And fishing industry, the fishing industry, will be at the forefront of that. Mm. Is, is a lot of what you're saying wishful thinking, though? I mean, uh, one, no, it isn't. Well, well, one person put it to me that it, that it's a bit like rose-tinted specks. There's no way in a million years we're going to get back what we had. We've got to look forward no. instead of instead of keeping keeping on looking backwards. Absolutely. And I've never, ever said that we would regain the fish industry that I remember as a lad on Ezra Road, uh, when I, everyone w- within my family, everyone that I knew, was involved in some way in the fishing industry. 120,000 people involved in the fishing industry in Hull. You know, that's never going to come back. But we can have a thriving fishing industry on the same model as, as Iceland. I've been over to Iceland. I've seen what they do. I've seen how they work. They've got a, a, a thriving fishing industry, and we can, we can get that back again. And let's, we're not just talking about Grimsby. We're talking about the country. We're talking about all those fishing ports around the country that could be fishing our waters, processing. It goes further than that. It's about the jobs in the industry. It's about engineering jobs. It's about you know the radio, the net makers. It's a massive, massive, multi-billion pound industry that we can get back. What about, you mentioned Iceland, and that is held up, isn't it? That model uh, of, of how Iceland do it as being the way that we could, uh, you know, uh, our policy could go. How, what do we need to do to make that uh, a similar thing happen here, do you think? Who is it down to? Well, it's down to the government. Once we get, once we uh, we get out of the European Union, finally, uh, and we need to get some investment back into the industry. Uh, and Iceland works, uh, and it works very well because the government, the scientists, and the fishermen all work together, hand in hand, and make the industry work. And that's what we need to be doing. Uh, there's a text here that says, if you might want to respond to, um, the uh, Brexit fishing industry uh, um, uh, effect is a lie. Uh, the Cod War, the, 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 the industry in this country was decimated by the Cod War uh, with the Yanks, it says here, as it's been put, with America and not with the EU. No, the Cod War, uh, I lived through the Cod War. I was, you know, as I say, I, I was born and brought up in Hull. I remember the Cod War in the 70s. That was a government an Icelandic government standing up for its fishermen. That is what they did. And that is what we never did. We never had a government that would stand up for its fishermen. We gave our fishing industry away to the European Union. Well, we'll be watching the negotiations closely. While you're here, Mike, I've got to ask you about um, the fact that you keep looking for a new leader this morning after Diane James stood down. 18 days in the job, Diane James uh, yeah. uh, lasted. Yeah. Um, let me just play you a bit of this. This is the, uh, the MEP for South East England, Diane James, saying she didn't have sufficient authority, that's what she said anyway, to see through the changes she'd planned. Um, that is in a stark contrast to the speech she made after winning the leadership contest last month. Here's a bit of that speech. Under my leadership... 
my serious messages to you all. We're going to confound our critics. We're going to outwit our opponents. We're going to build on our electoral success that we've achieved to date and do more. And as I said, we are the opposition party in waiting, so watch out. But all of you, wherever you are in the United Kingdom at the moment, I ask you, support me, work with me, win with me, make UKIP the winning machine it will become. Thank you, everyone. Well, 18 days later, she's gone, Mike. What happened? Well, I don't know what happened, but, uh, you know, she, she spoke very, uh, very well at the conference. Uh, the problem with it, she never spoke to any of the MEPs. Uh, the last time I saw it was at the conference. I haven't seen her since. Uh, I'm in Strasbourg now, and I haven't seen her in Strasbourg. She's in Strasbourg somewhere, but I haven't seen her. She never spoke to the MEPs. Uh, she wasn't strong enough. We need a strong leader that's going to take us still to 2020. Diane wasn't that person. You didn't, uh, ba you didn't you back know. her at all, then? I didn't, I didn't back out. Well, the, you know, I, I supported Bill Etheridge. Uh, I hope Bill will go for leader again. I believe he's a strong, steady hand that we need as a party that takes us through to 2020, to the, to the, the uh, Westminster elections. Uh, unfortunately, Diane was not that person. Uh, I, you know, and I knew that. I, I've known Diane for probably two years uh, as an MEP. Uh, and, and I, I knew then that she wasn't strong enough. She wasn't capable of doing the job. What, well, just finally, I mean, as you've said, you, you, nobody really knows yet what's happened. But what do you think is the reason for her stepping down? Well, I think, you know, we've all gone through life and we've all stepped up and gone for jobs. And once we've got the job, we've thought, oh, yeah, I've made a mistake here. And I think that's what's happened with Diane. She's got the job and then she's realised that, she, you know, it wasn't for her. Thank you for joining us. Mike Hookham, a UKIP MEP for Yorkshire and the Humber with us live this morning on Breakfast is 8.70.